Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on everything you wanted, didn't want to know, and things you didn't even know you didn't know about narcissism. So we're going to be taking on a very interesting question today of what the narcissist does when they lose their scapegoat. Before we get to that, gentle reminder, if you want information on the healing program that we're starting this year, please go to the video notes, click that link to get the information. And then we are going to also, I'm also going to remind you to please subscribe to this channel. If you're new to this community, always feel free to share comments about this because that's where we also sometimes get more new ideas and it allows the conversation to expand. So thank you again for being part of this YouTube community. And let's answer this question. What does the narcissist do when they lose their scapegoat? Well, for any of you who are currently or have been a scapegoat, with the narcissist. This is a question that comes up a lot, like, because there's a lot of fantasy around it. Like what happens when they lo no longer have me? Let's break it down. And I would also love to hear from you. If any of you were the scapegoat and you did finally find a way to step away, what happened when you stepped away? It's very, very, very hard for the scapegoat to pull away from the narcissist. The trauma bonding is so intense, but let's talk about it. A scapegoat, to be the scapegoat, this is a term that is most often used to describe the role somebody has in a narcissistic family system. It's the person or people in a family, narcissistic family system that get the worst of the narcissistic, narcissistic person's abuse. And because of the triangulation, the narcissist is often able to recruit other family or other members of the family system to perpetrate more abuse against the scapegoat, who over time becomes the punching bag for everyone in the family system. The scapegoat is subjected to criticism, mockery, humiliation, rage, sometimes physical or other forms of abuse, and becomes the repository of the narcissist's shame. It's as though the mere existence of the scapegoat brings out a sense of shame in the narcissistic person, and so they abuse the scapegoat even more. Now, scapegoating can happen in other narcissistic systems as well, including workplaces, groups of friends, or even other kinds of organized groups, community groups, uh, you know, any kind of group. It's only since there, there's a narcissist sort of a, in that system and there's some, someone that they're taking something out at, there's a scapegoat in it, right? The narcissist in some ways gets their power from other people watching fearfully at what is happening to the scapegoat and wanting to avoid that fate for themselves. And just like in any cult, other people get pulled into the narcissistic person's magnetic fold and join the scapegoating for any number of reasons. To win over the narcissist, to keep themselves safe in the system, to survive, perhaps to get their own power in the system. And because some of the people who join into the scapegoating are narcissistic themselves. To be a scapegoat is an absolutely terrible way to have to spend a childhood. It impacts attachment, it generates core wounds, it impairs a sense of safety in the world and identity development. Scapegoats may experience significant anxiety, not only in childhood, but also adulthood, self-devaluation, issues with self-esteem, holding limiting beliefs about the self, mood symptoms like depression, and basically scapegoats will spend a lifetime selling themselves short and often don't fully enact their potential. In more severe cases, scapegoated children, as they become older, may be at risk for even more dangerous behaviors, including self-harm, substance use, disordered eating, and other forms of dangerous acting out. It is an incredibly heavy, painful legacy to carry. However, though, here's the million dollar question. What happens when a narcissistic person loses their scapegoat? It's really quite interesting because in many ways, the narcissistic person uses the scapegoat to regulate. The narcissistic person is incapable of regulating disappointment, frustration, stress, or just basically not getting to get their way. So they lash out and they lash out at easy targets. And the scapegoat is often an easy target. As I said, for any number of reasons, the scapegoat often evokes shame in the narcissist, which obviously leads to rage. And that shame will get multiplied because the narcissist is aware at some level that their treatment of the scapegoat is not okay. And they keep doing it, 
which in essence, again, the narcissist knows at a deep, unprocessed level makes them a horrible person and they can't tolerate that idea of being a horrible person. And so bang, more rage inevitably directed at the scapegoat. I got to say some of my favorite stories of narcissistic abuse survivorship are when I hear about the scapegoat walking away. It sends chills down my spine and joy into my heart. Because of the trauma bonded nature of the scapegoat narcissistic relationship, it's one of the hardest things a person can do. Walking away may not always be physically walking away and leaving the situation. It may in some cases be mentally cutting out, but I got to tell you, physically getting out completely is really fantastic. It does happen. It's not easy. Now, when it does happen, when a scapegoat leaves the narcissist, a few things happen. First, the narcissist now has to find a new way to regulate. Now, initially, they will continue to lash out at the scapegoat, even if they're not there. They'll say, who do you think you are? Where the hell did you go? Do you really think you're going to be able to make it in the world without me? You're a loser. You're going to be back. They'll say those kinds of things. That can go on for a while. It might happen by text or email, social media. And the scapegoat has to be steadfast and be willing to block as much of this contact as possible. At some point, if the scapegoat can be resolute and not snap back, then the narcissistic person needs to find a new person to abuse. Now, there is that day, if the scapegoat's gone, the narcissist may find some new targets, perhaps the enablers in their midst, or someone else they devalued, but that was originally spared the worst of the narcissistic person's abuse because the scapegoat was around. The scapegoat is why narcissistic people often still have people around them because they were all spared the abuse. But when the scapegoat is gone, then we may see that the narcissist needs to yell at someone. So now more and more people start seeing how bad the narcissist behavior is. Some may even try to pull the scapegoat back into the system for no other reason so that they can stop being yelled at by the narcissist and the scapegoat can take the punches again. If you're a scapegoat, don't fall for that. Smear campaigns often arise when scapegoats leave. Instead of attacking the scapegoat to their face, the narcissistic person may then use triangulation, criticism of the scapegoat on public spaces like social media, or honestly, to anyone who will listen, maybe even making stuff up about the scapegoat. Anything that will allow the narcissistic person to regulate and to keep using the scapegoat as a punching bag, even from a distance. Sometimes the narcissistic person just deflates. Without an outlet for their rage, it continues to whirl around inside of them and just turns the narcissistic person darker and more deflated. Ironically, because many scapegoats are not only trauma bonded, but just too empathic for their own good, the scapegoat may feel pulled back in by the manipulation and the hoovering, or they may step in because they want to protect the people who are now being abused by the narcissist because the scapegoat is no longer there to be abused. Those other people, scapegoat reminder, those other people can get out too. It's not your job to save them. No human being should ever have to be a psychological punching bag for another person to have to be the pacifier or the regulation tool for another human being. Nobody. That's the narcissistic person's damned responsibility to get some therapy, get a grip, take some personal responsibility, and stop using the world as their emotional toilet. And to the scapegoat, remember that you owe the narcissistic person, and frankly, the people around them, nothing. And I mean nothing. It is an act of defiance, courage, and humanity to step away from a narcissist who abused you in this way. You deserve so much better than what they did and are doing to you. So I hope you heed that because let's face it, at the end of the day, someone else is going to take the narcissist's rage or it just eats him up inside. Thanks again.